Hi there, welcome back to my shed in Brittany. Today I'm going to talk to you about the uh, Asian hornet, which is an invasive species that arrived here in uh, 2004. It came into the Gironde area of France, which is sort of, if you don't know much about France, if you look at a map of it, it's the sort of middle section, but to the east. Uh, not as far south as Bordeaux, but sort of slightly further up the coast. So I want to also clarify that this is not uh, a talk to sort of moan about hornets. We've got a common hornet here called Vespa crabber, which actually does a lot of good. And it's really important to, to, to say that the common hornet, Vespa crabber, does not do any damage to nature at all. And it actually has a very important part in the life cycle of many insects. It controls a lot of flies. It controls a lot of the pest insects like mosquitoes. And yes, it takes a few honeybees, but probably only between 8 and 5%, which is estimated. The Asian hornet, which is... Velutina nigrothorax, um, which I'm hoping that you'll see some pictures of on the screen about now, will uh, is basically an invasive species. It arrived so in the Gironde in, in a couple of loads of China. Probably what happened was queens, well I explained about the life cycle, but queens basically leave a nest in the autumn. They then look for places to, to hibernate over the winter. And these two containers that were from China or Asia somewhere, would have been open at the time of dispersal from the nest. So these queens, queens would have then gone into the container, hard, uh, hidden in some little corner. Then the containers were brought over uh, to uh, France, unloaded, and then the queens that would have hibernated then would have gone off and started the nest. Tell you a little bit about the life cycle of the, uh, um, of the Asian hornet. Very similar to all hornets, and also exactly the same as the common hornet, Vespa crabber, we get here. What happens is uh, you have very, uh, sorry, I'll start from the start. So as I said before, the previous autumn, nests um, have sort of mating frenzies where they produce drones and queens are produced and then the queens mate with the drones and then they go off and hibernate. So come the following spring, the uh, queens then emerge from the hibernation. A lot die and a lot die during the first few weeks of emergence because they're either weak or they're predated over the winter by mice or wherever they lodge and um, they then start colonies. Now with the Asian hornet the difference is most of them start very small colonies the size of a golf ball but they actually do that in under the eaves of a shed or in a log pile somewhere where it's extremely quiet and protected. Now when the colonies got bigger very often the colony actually migrates and the problem with the Asian hornet is it actually migrates when it's the size of sort of a football, like this size, and it'll migrate to the top of a tree. But it won't be just the top of a tree in our garden, it'll be the top of the tree in a valley. So the access to try and find, to try and track it down, is virtually impossible. So the problem we've got with this is, compared to the common hornet, Vespa crabber, which doesn't actually do a lot of damage and does a lot of good, we've got this Asian hornet that eats ma mainly pollinators and also has nests that are a real pig of pig of a job to try and actually find them and destroy them. So it's an incredibly adaptable, invasive insect that's come over here and basically had a field day. In, uh, we're, I live in Dino, and Dino has a lot of canals and a lot of waterways that stretch further south. And it actually follows waterways because it knows there's a lot of insects, but its main diet is honeybees and it predates on mainly on pollinators, which is why this has become a major problem. So all the alarm bells have been ringing for the last couple of years and everyone's been panicking about it and, and looking about it. But actually, if you go back to the Gironde where it first came in, you've got, to you've got to look at these statistics and actually there is still beekeepers there. There is still beekeepers who run a, 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 biz a business. So it's not a complete disaster. It's here anyway, so it's going to stay here. There's no way we are going to get rid of it and unless they do something dreadful with some genetic release or some mutant that kills other ones. It's too dangerous. It's going to be here forever, so we've got to accept that fact. And we've got to look at the ways of limiting it. Now, uh, obviously, I've just talked about... I'm going to talk about traps now, and I'll show you how to make one of these hornet traps uh, that is pretty effective, uh, but only for trapping queens in the spring. But also, if you have a nest nearby in the summer it will decrease some of the workers so you will weaken the colony so it will be better. So to know uh, a little bit about traps uh, it's really you know it's a little bit about the life cycle which I've explained before but also you need to know that if you trap in the spring when you're trapping queens 
uh, that are emerging from hibernation, that's what your target pest is, okay? So, um, should you be targeting uh, just the, the, the Asian hornet? Well, yes, we should be. But this is the kind of debate where a lot of people who are heavily into nature, and I am as well, I'm a beekeeper, and I respect that because the Vesper, the Vesper crabbo, the common hornet, does have a very important role in the, the, the natural balance of things in, in the area and around my beehives. So I don't mind it taking a few, but at the same time, if I trap a few common hornets as well as Asian hornet queens in this trap, I'm not too bothered because it does reduce the numbers. And because there is so many common hornet nests around, you can't say that really by trapping Asian hornets and getting a few common hornets in the trap, you're gonna have any major issues. You're not causing major problems. Okay, if you trap heavily and you put t hundreds of traps out in that area, in that region of, I don't know, maybe, um, maybe a complete commune or, or something like that, you would probably have a build up of uh, unwanted pests because they wouldn't be predating on the flies, the mosquitoes and all the rubbish. But when I put one of these traps up, what I mainly get is, is blue bottles, wax moth, Asian hornet, and uh, common hornet, Vespa crabo. So you can, when we make this, you can, the internal bit there, you can put a cap on it. That little, you can see the blue ring there from the internal screw. You can put a cap on it. And if you take the cap, you can drill a seven millimeter hole in that cap. And that's the size that only the Asian Hornet can crawl through. So you would really technically only trap Asian Hornets. But the problem is it actually deters some of the Hornets because they, they're actually a bit smart. And they kind of know when they get into this part of the trap, this is the roof to protect it from the rain. They smell it, they go in there and they go down to the top cup and they go, oh, I'm not so sure. So you do actually have a trap that's not as working quite as efficiently as it could be. So I personally, this is purely my own point of view, I trap everything that goes in there. Now, I'll show you what happens when I empty one of these traps out, and I'll show you what you get. And it's important for me to show you this because I don't want everyone jumping on the bandwagon going, oh, you shouldn't do that to nature. I do understand, and I'm stressing the point, that it's extremely important to not kill everything in nature. I don't chuck pesticides around, I don't spray anything like that, but we have to control as many queen Asian hornets that emerge in the spring as possible, because we obviously want to keep the numbers down. I've talked to you before and said, we're never going to cure this, which is true, but we've got to look at a way. Okay, so I'll go through how we make the trap in a minute. There's one other thing I want to discuss, and there is, a little predator, okay, that, um, that does actually lay eggs in the abdomen of the queen. Now, what's happened is we've had an invasive species come in in this particular region in the last two years, and this year we know it's going to be the worst year that we've ever had with them. But we think, and this has already happened in the south of France where it first came in, we think that this little tiny predatory wasp that is probably about one or two millimeters in length. I couldn't tell you the size because I'm not that up on this, but there's a little predatory wasp called Canopsis vesticularis, okay? And it's, it actually lays eggs in the abdomen of the, the, uh, the, the what they call the queen, in French, you call it the queen fondatrice or the, or the, the, the main queen who, who starts the colony. And then basically it predates the queen. So the queen becomes extremely inefficient, doesn't lay prop, proper eggs and she dies. So but, th but this pest isn't around here much at the moment because like all predators that invade that are invasive in a new area, the, the predators that actually predate on them tend to follow a few years later. So they're already finding in the Gironde area and in France, south of here, that the actual numbers of this predatory wasp have actually increased. So all the people that are jumping on the jumping up and down going, Asian hornet, let's kill it, let's what we can. Yeah, let's do that. But at the same time, look at what's coming in behind it. We are getting some natural predators that do actually exist. So there's become a slight of a balance. You know, if you looked at historically over hundreds and thousands of years, bees have had to deal with this kind of problem. And I'm not saying that it's the best thing to do nothing, but the way we're all going to end up going is we're going to realise that there's probably a good balance that will form, but it might take several years. And perhaps we should just try and keep the numbers of the Asian hornet down at first, because otherwise they do become a complete pest. I've got a, a, co a colleague who runs a nature website, uh, and it's called www.planetpassion.eu. And I'll try and put the subtitles up. Uh, Chris Luck runs the site, and he's got some really good information on kind of um, what effects he's seen on the Asian hornets. And he lives in the Gironde, where it first came out. And you can see that 
the way he talks and the way he describes this invasive species that actually it isn't as much of a problem as perhaps we all thought it was going to be at first. But it's taken a couple of years to get to that. And they're probably seeing the areas of this predatory wasp, sorry, the levels of it increasing. So it's all very interesting, all food for thought. Um, there's nothing anyone can actually do about it, as I've already discussed, and it is going to stay here. We've just got to try and make sure we limit the numbers. So there's, what can you do as a beekeeper to limit your numbers if you've got a, a nest? Well, well, sorry, if you've got colonies of bees. Okay, the, one of the first things you can do, and it's the same thing for all pests and disease, is keep your colonies as strong as possible. That's the key to all pests and diseases, is to keep your colonies strong. If you do splits, do them in the spring. If you do summer splits after the honey harvest, do them, but don't do them and move any colonies to, to less than three colonies together. Because you, if you think about it, if you've got one or two or three colonies that's next to a strong colony of Asian hornets or, or within the vicinity of, they are going to weaken your t one, two or three colonies a lot. And they're going to weaken them so much that they're going to die, basically. They won't make it for the following winter. But if you've got... So do a lot of your work with your bees in the spring when the, uh, the Asian hornets queens are trying to just start their colony because they won't be using much of your bees as a resource for them. If you do, as I say, if you do splits in the summer, just keep an eye on things and monitor it carefully because you might find that these Asian hornets keep flying like they did here. I had them into November and December. We had such a fantastic uh, September last year, which I've gone on about lots about the ivy flow and all that. The insects were just going mad right until late September, early October and into November. And I was actually seeing more Asian hornets for me here personally uh, into November. So um, there is also a mechanical method. You can literally have a, um, a badminton racket or an old plastic, uh, plastic racket that literally hanging up by your apiary. And if you see an Asian queen messing around, they're not actually that quick Asian queens. They're only quick when they're predating. And if you find one on the ground, usually or on some old wax or some uh, some cappings you put out in the spring for your bees, which you might well find one on, you can easily swat it with a table with a with a racket, a tennis racket or a badminton racket, and that's a really effective way. Don't forget, one Asian hornet queen you kill is probably um, a, a huge colony less in the summer. But as I said before, a lot die in the spring. There's a lot of natural selection. So we just should be going towards reducing the numbers because it is going to be here forever. It, it, until something else comes in to, to, to prey on the Asian hornet. I don't know, I don't think they ever will be, but anyway. So, all that aside, let's look at uh, making some traps. I'll show you how to make up these traps. They're pretty simple. Uh, you can make them out of two uh, lovely little uh, cheapo Coca-Cola bottles and they work really well, okay? Um, I'll go through and explain what you need to make them, how you put it inside, and how often you should check them. And I will also try and film later today filling up a trap or emptying out previously dead wasps and how you manage that and how often you should do it. Okay. Okay, so.